What's up, everybody? Welcome to the most celebrated podcast in pickleball. It could be self-proclaimed. We don't know. But Major League Pickleball is turning this sport into literally everybody's talk of the town in America because of the format, because of the player-driven league concept, and, of course, the star-studded ownership, which today we will be diving into with some of the newest ownership Members on the circuit, this is Inside Major League Pickleball. If you're new here, welcome. If you are old here, welcome back. We're happy to have you. I am Michelle McMahon, a sports broadcaster, uh, Pickleball Spiciest Ginger, alongside my co-host, former pro and Olympic volleyball player, future pro pickleball player, Casey Patterson. Also joining us, Father Nature, a legend, a man we all know, the, the face for TV and a voice for radio. He welcomes us back every week. He's really good at talking. Tyson Apostle, also Pickleball's most notable fashionista. We we have to include that in there as well. Um, additionally, the reason you're here are two of our amazing guests today, and they are a part of MLP's latest ownership announcement That could very well break the internet this week. We're excited about it. Former number one ranked women's tennis player in the world in both singles and doubles. She won six major titles, four in singles, two in doubles. She's legit. She broke down barriers in every aspect of the sport. She continues to do big things along the way. Kim Kleisters is joining us now with her partner in crime, known as the Pickleball Chick on Instagram. She's a former All-American Duke soccer player. Six knee surgeries, by the way, one ankle surgery. We're going to dive into that because I've got to know a little bit more about that story. Uh, She can't run or jump currently, but she found pickleball, and that has changed her life. She's going to tell more of her story. We're going to dive in with them in just a moment. But first, a shout-out to our sponsors, starting with ProXR, the official paddle of MLP, the only paddle custom fit for your grip. Knock Around, the official sunglasses of MLP, quality shades that won't break the bank. And Aura Organic, the official nutrition partner of MLP. Transform your health with plant-based nutrition from Aura. Last but not least, Franklin, the official ball of MLP. The Franklin X40 delivers the best in-game flight out of any ball on the market. Tyson. Michelle. That was so awesome. <laughs> I mean, every week it gets better and Thanks, better. Guys. And Thank I you. feel like the intro that I wrote for myself for you to deliver is getting more believable, not only to the audience, but also <laughs> to just us here. Because at first you were like, you rolled your eyes. You're like, I don't know if you're really the face <laughs> for TV. I didn't and believe I'm, it. I yeah, believe it today. It's impossible to I have someone. Sad. It felt real. <laughs> <laughs> it did feel real. <laughs> it felt like you delivered truth. <laughs> And I appreciate that. And I am super pumped today. Uh, First of all, happy World Pickleball Day, I believe. National Pickleball Day, World Pickleball Day, whatever it is. I think it's world. If it's not already, it will be. Uh, (laughs) And, uh, yeah, that's exciting. Pickleball has its own day. And today we are here with Kim Kleisters. Kim, you come from the heyday. I say, I remember that was like, a beautiful time in women's tennis when you were number one, you had Justine Hen in there, you had uh, the Williams, and it was a battle each and every week to see who was going to be world number one the next month. I loved it. It is. It was really, really exciting. And um, you know, every, with everything that's been happening, Serena retiring, and just it gives you time to reflect on you know those twenty years of, of you know of her career, but me being a part of that, it was. Um, yeah, just, yeah, super exciting. I mean, it was, you know, some great, great competitive matches and, and um, it was fun to travel the world. And now I'm uh, st- stuck in Belmar, New Jersey. <laughs> stuck? <laughs> stuck. <laughs> Caitlin, rebuttal, because uh, you're, Ju- you're there too. It's supposed to be the best time of your life down the street from Cali and I. Yeah, no, we've is. all seen Jersey Shore on MTV, so I'm assuming it's just like yeah. Party Central down there all the Gym, time. Tan laundry, re- only, rinse at, and repeat. only at Caitlin's house. Oh, no. <laughs> no, so that's not true. Yeah. You two are both part of a group that is the new ownership, and. How did this come to pass? How did this whole, there's four of you, you guys can say the other names, uh, very, very exciting stuff, but how did this take place? Like you guys are all just like friends hanging out poker night and decided (laughs) to 
by a major league pickleball it's a party team. Party at Caitlin's house. We already yeah. know. Kim said that. It's always at Caitlin's. They're Definitely folding laundry. <laughs> Caitlin, how did this happen? Uh, yeah. So basically, back in May, I had met Steve Kuhn at the New York City Open. I just went directly up to him. I didn't know him at all, and I wanted to thank him for everything that he was doing for the sport uh, because I really believed in the MLP and believe that this was the future future sport of the world. Um, I thought that it was incredible how you can play it socially, you can play it competitively, and most importantly, I love the team aspect that MLP brought. Um, I also thought with the duper rating system, it was far and away better than any of the existing rating systems, especially for amateur play. So at the time, I just went up to him and introduced myself. Um, so I had been talking to Steve since May. Um, nothing related to purchasing a team by any means, but uh, my best friend, Callie Simpkins, uh, we played Duke soccer together. We live here at the Jersey Shore. And about, actually, I always say we met them, but we didn't. So I work as a financial advisor, and Kim actually hosted one of our tennis events. I guess it was three or four years ago now. Even longer. Yeah, longer. Four, five years. Maybe, I think, probably like four years yeah. ago. So show up to the tennis event, and my boss always says, what an amazing person that Kim is. We have like four tennis legends that join us. And then we have like 16 to 18 clients. So he's like, yeah, I'm bringing Kim. She is the sweetest. You're going to absolutely love her. So we're talking during this tennis event and she's like, where do you live? And I'm like, well, I actually just bought a house at the Jersey Shore. She's like, oh my God, where? We wind up being actually at the same exact town. Um, which we had no clue. So, <laughs> so this wasn't so on purpose, husband, Caitlin. So my you husband is from this town. No, I, I had no idea because she was actually still living in Belgium. <laughs> yep. She was still living in Belgium. Her husband's from this town. So they bought this house and were just like coming here randomly, not living here. So I had no clue that she had a place. Like this was actually random. So then um, fast forward a year or two, she starts training to come back for tennis, meets my best friend Callie's sister. She starts training her like fitness wise and we all I started playing pickleball and she had never played before and I think Emmy brought you out to the courts with me and Callie and then we played and then the rest is history we've been friends ever yeah. since so um I guess like a month ago we got on a call with Steve Kuhn Kim Callie and then two other investors Tom Wagner and um another partner and you can say started... the name oh yeah <laughs> Tom Brady. <laughs> and, um, you might and, know. Yeah. And basically, we just started discussing this opportunity, which the other partners like Tom Wagner and Nighthead, we had been discussing some things about other pickleball um, ventures that we were looking into. And Callie, Kim and I had always been looking into other venture deals um, that we wanted to invest in together and nothing sort of came to fruition. And it wasn't anything that we were really passionate about together. So for the past two years, we've been looking at deals and this just happened to be something that we all love and enjoy doing, something that we love playing together and something that we truly believe in. So it was kind of the perfect, yeah. um, perfect deal for us. We're all competitive. We like to play sports. We, we, like she brings her, her boyfriend along. Like I bring my family along. Like it's, it's such a fun way to, to kind of have a social Sunday together and, um, and work out together. So we, uh, yeah. We, she introduced me to pickleball. And Kim, it, Caitlin makes it sound like it's just fate that all of this happened. Do you, do you suspect <laughs> anything where Caitlin was just like tracking your movements somehow? No, I trust her completely. No, okay. I don't. Right. No, it all, I, I feel the same way. It, um, it, it's, uh, it happened, yeah, very organically and very, it, it all happened very smoothly. And then who brought the Toms in? Is that how you refer to them? Tom Wagner and Tom Brady. Is, I have whose nothing to do with that? that. I can't take that. That how do you say that? I can't take the the credit the credit for that. No, I can't. That's no. So Callie, Callie yeah, Callie invited me on. We we all went to the Final Four in men's basketball together. So Tom Wagner was from Villanova, uh, graduated from Villanova. We graduated both from Duke and Villanova played Duke in the men's Final Four this year. So we all went to the Final Four together. And so I, you know, met Tom Wags. Really loved him thought he was a really smart investor, but a really good person, which is really what I think that our investor group brings to the table. I think we're all really good people at first, like first and foremost, we're good people. Um, then we're good investors. And I think one thing that we really want to bring to MLP is 
we are actually passionate about pickleball and we want to build that like winning team culture uh, because we've all been part of teams in our lives. And I think it's really important for us to put the players first and build like a culture within the team that can elevate, elevate the entire team and league. That was like the first thing that, that I thought of when I, uh, Tyson told us the other day that we were going to have you guys on here. I was like, yes. Oh my gosh. They're bringing so much like team dynamic and experience. And, you know, Kim, especially having like an epic team around you. And I know what it takes to get to that point where you're, you know, you're playing on the world tour. You're, you know what I mean? You're number one, you have somebody in charge of every specific part of that team. Mm. And without that team, it's so hard to be successful. And so I was like, oh my God, I want to hear what you we ladies have to say about the culture that you're going to create and like what kind of training camp or <laughs> what kind of situation there's going to be for this team because I'm training my heart out to get on this team. That's my one goal. I want to be like, <laughs> for, no, draft draft like I'll one. do whatever it takes. I'll do whatever it takes. I'll be the most coachable what athlete are you looking in the for? world. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A really <laughs> nasty overhead. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, super athletic, former volleyball player by chance. <laughs> I can I can help you. you. No, Casey, yeah. I think one one second I have to get my No, it, it's it's really um it's really important to us, right? Like I come from an individual sport, like I'm on the court by myself, but there's a whole team sitting on the sideline yeah. and people at home that, you know, work with me and and that, you know, I give all the credit to when I win or hold up a trophy and I think that's what we believe in. Like when I talk you know, Caitlin, Callie and I, when we've been talking about how can we, the things that we can improve or bring to a team, you know, that's, that's how we talk is we want to bring, you know, good, good physio. We want to like the whole yeah. treatment of, yeah. of like, oh. how do you take care of your, your, your players? And, um, and yeah, we have the experience. And so I think that's something that maybe as women that we like to care, we like to, you know, to yes. bring that to mm -hmm. our team. Um, so that will be very important. And, um, you know, we are starting our meetings up sh soon and that will all be discussed. So, um, yeah, super excited to kind of bring that's our cool. personal touches to, uh, to the team. Yeah, what's, that's one, rad. what's one aspect that you feel like is maybe missing or, or like still in progress of growing that you guys in your group and obviously your meetings are coming up, but that you really feel like you guys can maybe take this thing to the next level. Like give us a few specific examples on that, where you feel like you're going to bridge the gap or just kind of push the, push the envelope well, a little bit. Something that I've noticed, obviously there's been so much attention on the sport, right? And th the players that are going to come into these teams are going to be on TV more. They're going to be recognized more. And that takes a little bit of time to get used to as well. Some players really will enjoy that. Some might not really like that part of it, or they just want to play pickleball and they don't want to have all the other extra attention on them. So I think a little extra of, of that experience that I've shared for, you know, from a young, I was 15 when I came on tour, um, to, to kind of share my personal experiences with, with some of the players. And um, if they want it, uh, I'm sure Tom has so many, uh, you know, great advice to give. And, and um, so I think that is something that I think um, the sport is growing so quickly. And, and if, if it will become more and more famous, um, you know, that will add a little part to their life that they're not used to yet. And I, I love also that think... you say that. That's I'm so sorry. good. That's so good because you don't think about that, especially with how quick the sport's growing, like you mm. said. The, 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 these players have come from like almost this underground, no, no one really knows kind of sport. We go play for fun socially to, all right, cameras are on, stadiums are full and you got owners that have been in, you know, number one in the world in a lot of different sports and everyone's eyeballs are on you and you're like, you know, you can win and you have no idea what to say. <laughs> so yeah, right. understand how to be comfortable yeah. around that also helps you win. Like I, I can't even turn the switch on unless there's cameras in a full stadium right now for me. So it's like, oh, <laughs> I just gotta so, get, I gotta find a team. What you're not seeing behind Casey is he has a bunch of hired cameramen here mm. right now just so that he can be on for this. Otherwise his his laptop camera isn't enough. Oh, I'm glad you said it. Thank you. Kim, we've yeah. seen in the past on Florida Smash this guy Travis Rettenmeyer, Rettenmeyer he drafted himself as an owner. Are we gonna see that here? Are you gonna get on the court a little bit? 
I mean, no. I, I'll be on the court. I'll warm yes. up. I'll warm up the players. If <laughs> okay. Or something, you know? um, no, but I do like to play. I love it. And I, you know, get very competitive. And um, I play with Caitlin. I play with a bunch of guys here um, throughout uh, every Friday afternoon. Um, and um, it gets very competitive. And it's my, you know, two hours. I actually play tennis for an hour from 1 to 2. And then from 2 to 3.30, we play pickleball. So, okay, now um, you're just bragging. <laughs> no, no. I just like I need to stay. Day. You know, I need to keep doing both. I don't. You know, I love both sports, so. <laughs> what, uh, have you guys already talked about team names here? We have not discussed team names. Um, Should so... we brainstorm? That <laughs> we can. That would be a good idea. I mean, it's something good for powerful and aggressive. Right? <laughs> yeah. Powerful and aggressive and a signal of, like, uh, what about the, the isn't there a feisties. lion on the. Ooh. The <laughs> what feisty you say? The feisty <laughs> kleisties. <laughs> We could throw that one out, but it's kind of funny. <laughs> I've never I heard mean, that. <laughs> isn't isn't there a lion on the Flemish <laughs> on the Flemish flag? There is. Is mm. there already a team named the Lions? I don't know. Yeah, there is. I think there is. Oh, yeah. they got yeah. it. They knew. There they is knew the Lions. That we yeah, were the for Lions them. exist. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, we'll have to figure it out. We can do that off camera, but I think that, like you know, oh, Michelle's got a good one. I have a question. I want to know. Oh. I will. Well, both of you have such intricate backgrounds. Kim, obviously, prolific tennis background. Um, we know your prowess there. Caitlin, you were. You said you couldn't even run after all of your injuries with soccer. So I'm curious to know, just from you know, your athletic backgrounds and what pickleball as a sport has meant not only to your athletic background and feeding that side of your life, but also to what you're doing now, how has it um, enhanced your life in that way? I mean, it truly changed my life. And I, I just am not saying that like it actually, it, it, it truly did. Um, I'm almost getting emotional saying that because for, so I played soccer my whole life, but I also played like a ton of other sports and soccer was just my dream was to play pro. That's all I cared about. Um, my parents were always pushing academics, which I always went to really good schools. And obviously I went to Duke, which is a great school, but I truly only cared about going pro. So I graduated early, like did a ton of classes early to go pro. And I've had all these surgeries throughout my career. And I have a hole in my femur because I don't have meniscus in my left lateral part of my knee. So it's something that can't be fixed in today's medicine yet. So I had this really intense surgery after my senior year. Um, but I always kind of played with a big brace on. And I, again, I had all these surgeries. I don't need to go into detail. But basically, I, I developed a hole in my femur that can't be fixed. So the resulting, I guess, issue is, is that I have to get a knee replacement at some point. So post-college, I went into... I worked on Wall Street for like three, four years. It was fine, but I'm such an athlete at heart and competitor that it was kind of like I was missing something in my life for, it was eight years after. And I tried golf and like the torque hurt my knee. I tried, I, I surf, but I don't, I'm not passionate about surfing. I like it, but it's not something I love to do. And so I tried all these different sports that wouldn't be harsh on my knee. And it wasn't until I found pickleball in March of 2021 where I found something that I loved that I constantly wanted to go back and get better at. And then also it really like socially, it was just so much fun. I mean, I'm living at the beach. I used to live in cities. Um, there's not as much going on down here. So it enabled me to make like a completely different group of friends and interact with people that I would, you know, I play with an 80 year old. I play with a 12 year old. Like it's just so you play with, you know, construction workers to, to other yeah. people in different industries. And it's just so much fun. Um, so yeah, I started, I thought like when I started in March, 2021, I'm like, this sport's going to take off. I should do something with pickleball because I truly love it. And for like eight months or whatever that was, nine months, I was just too scared to start an Instagram because I'm like, I have a legit job. Um, <laughs> this is so awkward. Like people are going to see me and it's just embarrassing. And then I was like, screw it. I don't give a sh about what anyone thinks about me. Why do I care about what they think about me on social? Like I don't, why do I care? So I started pickleball check and I'm just like, I'm going to do what feels right. And I don't care what people think. So I started it and I didn't believe in manifesting, but now I do because all my friends are pushing manifesting, like do what you want with your life. And 
now I feel like I'm manifesting like the life that I want to create. Like I do love finance, but I also love sports and to be involved in this capacity now has just been a dream come true. Yeah. For me, it's been the social part. I mean, I, you know, moving to the States two years ago, not knowing it was the middle of COVID, you couldn't really do much besides, you know, plays, you know, either go running by yourself or do something. But pickleball was, was, yeah, the social aspect. It really, you know, I, I met so many people and, and yeah, we play weekly now and it's, uh, it's really, really exciting. And it's, it's, it's a really good way for me to kind of get integrated in kind of the local community a little bit and, um, and, and meet yeah, a ton of different people from different parts of uh, life. Yeah. So investing in this major league pickleball team, what are you envisioning for the future of the sport and the league? There is so much. I mean, one thing that when Michelle asked previously, like, what do we think we can sort of help out with or, or help the league grow and the sport grow? I think, I think our group brings a ton of history and knowledge in terms of partnerships and sponsorships. And in a league where right now you don't have to go and to pay to watch yet, I think that that's really going to drive the growth of the league. Um, we have amazing partners within all different aspects of life. Like we come from the athletic background. We have people in, in the financial world. We have, you know, I think we just touch so many different parts of the world and it's like, we all play the sport. So it's like, we have the passion, we have the partnerships and, and um, connections to get people involved more to help the league grow. Um, I think now with, you know, you're moving from 12 teams to 16 teams. So the expansion is there. Now it's like really investing in the league and driving like people's attention, getting big media contracts, getting big partnership deals with like, you know, key clothing brands or, or I don't know, hospitality groups. I think there's just so much opportunity in that respect. So I'm really excited to get to, to dive in deep and hard and quick because we only have two months. Um, you know, we're looking at 2023 and, you know, there's six events that are occurring, but we have to get a team together. We have to do the draft and we have to get sponsorships and partnerships and we are going to attack it. So. We, already, we already have one player, so that's good. <laughs> you? Who? Which one? Casey. She's Casey. Just... Oh my gosh. Wait, what? Is like, like, is a... Tom Brady playing pickleball? Wait, what? I thought Tom I thought Kim I'd changed destroy your Tom. Mind. I would destroy no, no, Tom. No. You would. Ooh, I believe in Casey. First. Oh, no, no, no. All I'm envisioning is like a new, uh, the new iPhone and like similar to the line out the door, like around the block is a, a line to try to try out for your ladies team. Just to be like, oh my gosh, I have to get on this team. They actually, there's like the priorities, the athletes, getting the sponsorships, making sure everything's dialed in. It's super professional. You got all walks of life. Oh, this is amazing. Like we Disneyland hope we have people Pickleball. lining up. I mean, I feel like yeah, we'll see. We want to be the team that everyone wants to play for. So we're going to do whatever it takes to be that for the players in the league. I mean, it's touching on that is super attractive to be part of this team. You have two women, two men. It's the same kind of situation as a team build. You get different dynamics, different visions, different uh, strengths and weaknesses in that capacity, plus your backgrounds in sport, like it's kind of the full package, is it not? I yeah, think I think that's guys... how we feel too. <laughs> we feel like, you know, we could maybe, we'll see how it goes, hopefully if it all goes well, but like maybe be a role model to some of the other teams or t new yeah. teams that maybe don't have that ex experience and kind of set the bar a little higher than yeah, what some of them are used to. And, um, and again, I think, you know, being – you know, past athletes, like we know how important it is to put the players first. And I think that's what right. the MLP does so well is, is they really focus on the players and, um, and want to grow the sport for the players. And, and I think, yeah, I mean, I've had my career, you know, she had her, had her career and she's starting in, 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 in pickleball. We, we want to help players create a great career and be a small part in that. And I think that's, yeah, that's exciting for us to kind of give back from what we learned in our careers. It's so huge to hear from a new team with owners saying like having that be one of the first things that they say, because all, you know, majority of the time it's ah, pickleball is so amazing. So we got to get a pro team and get the best players. And it's like, no, we're here to make it the greatest experience for the team because this has changed our lives and we no longer compete in our sports and this, or, you know, or here and there, but 
you know, pickleball has bridged so many gaps that's like we're creating the greatest synergy of of team members in and out of like on and off the court. That's that's every player's dream. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and I think that the one thing that you asked about, like, what do we see in the future and how do we see MLP developing? We have so many thoughts on that, that it's like almost we have too many thoughts. Like we, you know, the MLP, for example, has asked each team to pick a location and you have to submit your top three. Um, I'm not going to say our top three right now because we are really gung ho on getting one. So we hope we get that one. But, um, you know, for example, in the future, would we build a stadium? Would we build training facilities? Would we have... Um, you know, different events like a pro-am before, or would we have a camp the day after on a Monday for amateurs in the local area after a big tournament to come to? Like, we just have endless opportunities, I feel like, or would we do like a tennis thing with pickleball, like where Kim could play tennis with people and then like involving different parts of our lives mm -hmm. into this, I think is going to be really cool and interesting. And one thing that I think our team's excited to do too is like, we all love each other. So we would just like to hang, like Kim and I are going to the event this weekend and we're pumped to go to the welcome party on Thursday and hang out and meet the other owners and talk to the players and play pickleball and play pickleball. Oh, like, I'm so sad. I'm so sad. I'm not going. Oh, oh. Yeah, next so time. Jealous. January. Next time. Oh, I was, I was man. talking to my, my cousin earlier who used to be a, a coach at my a tennis academy in Belgium, and she now works for a, a college. Uh, she teaches there, and she got asked to teach the kids pickleball in Belgium. And she says, wow, like, I'm so happy I no learned way. it when I was in the States. Visit, she visited me this summer, and we played pickleball with her a few times. But she got asked now by the school to teach the kids some that's pickleball. So, cool. so she just told me that's a few hours ago. So, so cool. And I'm like, that's, that's really nice to hear. That's Steve Kuhn rad. just that's sent out so a letter cool. about that, like um, how pickleball he believes he's like it sounds like a hyperbole but i believe that this sport can make the world a better place because everyone that most people that play i can't say everyone most people that play become obsessed with it but it's it's like such a unifier like it bridges every gap like caitlin you were just saying you were playing with an 80 year old and a construction worker and a 13 year old it's like what other sport ever in existence can that one happen does it happen and it like regardless of your differences you come together which is a segue because kim i have a question for you because there's so much animosity now on, on the side of tennis players, some, not all, <laughs> that it is not always well accepted on the side of tennis in terms of some tennis people feel that pickleball is taking over I, everything and they don't like I it. I have like, noticed. Some, yeah, yeah. There's some like posts on social media. I think the Dink posted something recently how it was like there was a somebody put up a sign like, don't take over our courts. This is tennis and not pickleball. It seems to be more one way. The tennis, tennis not really appreciating pickleball as much as vice versa. I don't think it's universal. I think there's a lot of tennis players that do love the sport of pickleball, but I do think there's a segment that just tennis players that hate pickleball and just want to keep their tennis. They don't like when it's called baby tennis. They don't, they don't want it associated with their sport at all. So what's your perspective on the tennis pickleball rivalry? Listen, I'm very, I love both sports. Tennis was my passion for the longest time. And now I'm so excited that I can, you know, here go to to the public courts and play pickleball and and go and play with my daughter on a sunday when she's off and and with the family like it's such a fun sport to play uh, but we do a lot of things like that so i i don't like that it's 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 being put up against each other um you know people always i think they love to compare and uh, and, and try to take you know talk it down or something but i i just love it i think it's so accessible i think it's great any any sport that people can play is great it's healthy. It's good for you. It's good for your social life. So I don't, you know, why complain over, you know, pickleball totally. or taking, putting some extra lines on a tennis court or not. I mean, I practice play tennis on those, you know, courts where I play pickleball, you know, literally five minutes later on the same court. So it's, yeah, we don't have to make a big deal out of it. it they're <laughs> both Kim fun. Kim can do it. You can too. Yes. You hear Come that? On, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. That's great. I think it's yeah. great. The more people, the more kids that can play sports, whether it is people will gravitate towards what they like anyway, whether it is tennis or pickleball or basketball or whatever it is. I think it's just really good for people to play sports. And if they can start at a young age, pickleball is very accessible um, for younger kids as well. And I think it's it's great for, for kids to start, you know, moving, being outside a little bit more and, and, and play um, play in a, in a kind of team atmosphere. What are you, uh, both of you are going to Columbus. You're both going for the entire weekend. 
Is I'm that not. correct? I'm You're only not. staying for two days. Two I'll days. I'll be there the whole weekend. Okay. I have three and kids. <laughs> that's a lot. Three kids. So you should stay longer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> two days is good. Listen, and then my guilt from the man guilt that has time. Time. <laughs> starts to kick in. Yeah. yeah. As soon as I leave, I feel terrible. I'm like, oh, I miss you guys. And then like the second day, I'm like, wow, it's so quiet. I have my own thoughts. No one's asking me a hundred questions all at the same time. There's no bedtime routine. This is amazing. And I do Caitlin, miss it though after a few days. Yeah, that is true. I have two little girls too. So, oh, okay. Uh, Caitlin, you're hosting. You're hosting yes. the event. You'll be around all weekend on the mic, on the MC, on the court <laughs> as well. And uh, I'm going to have so much FOMO this weekend. Ugh. You guys are going to be on the court playing. Michelle's going to be there buddying up with you guys, probably <laughs> trying to get Casey drafted. Oh, and, my gosh, uh, yes. I'll be, your I'll be watching Casey. it all live. Only a 10% uh, cut. <laughs> have Done. both of you been to an MLP event before? I Neither of you have? Nope. None of, none of our team has. What, are, what is your expectations? Are you, like, what are you expecting to see? What are you hoping to see? What have you heard? I'm just going to learn a lot, like to take it all in, meet, you know, meet the, the team, meet, uh, you know, the staff, meet the players, um, just to get a feel for what it's like. And, and um, so that, you know, when we start going into our meetings for the team that we can kind of understand it a little bit better and, um, and, and yeah, just kind of to meet everybody that's, that's a part of MLP. And I've heard of all the hype in terms of, I feel like it is the tournament or it is the league that every player wants to play for. And some that have those exclusive contracts with the PPA really feel like they're missing out because of how amazing the MLP has treated the players, how, you know, how they give players freedom and how uh, the amazing, like the team culture is. And, you know, you, you've seen it. Not all the best players win the tournaments. There's so much more to it. Like the grittiness you've heard of um, how they interact together is so important so i'm really excited to see just like the team environment how they interact and um like she said really just learn because i think we're really going there to see what we can do for our team and what we can do for the league to make it extremely successful right so are you let's say you get there you see some clear advantages you can use on your team that would also benefit other teams and the league are you keeping those to yourself you know, just for the first season. Uh, I mean, let me just say this. Uh -huh. We are the most competitive okay. five people <laughs> I've ever met in my life. Like, I thought I was psycho competitive. And I met Kim Kleisters. And I was uh -huh. like, everyone's like, you two are two peas in a pod with how psycho competitive you are. And Tom, like, Tom Wagner always told us how Tom Brady was like, the most psycho competitive person with like everything, like <laughs> not just, not just sports related. And Callie, Callie is yep. our, my best friend. Callie is psycho competitive. So I think like we are going to want to win and we're going to do everything we can to put together a winning team. Um, but what that looks like going forward, we're going to have to figure that out. But um, we are going to have our eyes all over the players, seeing how they're interacting with each other. <laughs> um you know, I've been doing some player interviews, which has been nice to get to know some of them, but, you know, on my Pickleball Chick channel. But um, I think just being there and seeing how they play on the court, but also how they are off the court is really important for us. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So <laughs> the, I, I, we wanted to keep this primarily focused on you guys. I have to ask one Tom, question, Tom Brady question. Just how did he become associated with your ownership group? Is that through Tom Wagner, it sounds like? Or what have you guys met with him before? Have you guys had so – or is this all coming together as new? I mean, obviously, you guys have the friendship background. How are the other pieces fitting together? Yeah. Um, so Tom Wagner knows Tom Brady really well. Um, so he had wanted to get him in um on this and we obviously were overjoyed and we think that he not only fits into our group in terms of he's one of the best athletes of all time but he's a really good person and so mm -hmm. we're looking forward to getting to know him and bringing him on to a winning culture that we are going to create together he probably wanted awesome. to compete with Drew Brees, if I had to guess. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and LeBron, when you see and those LeBron. big names, they yes. want to be a part of that. Yeah, yes. it's true. I'm cool. excited well, to have like, like a pro am or something, you know, where we all yeah. play together. We yes. play against the pros and yes. we all like do like a fun event together. Oh my God, yeah. that'd I mean, be so fun. My money's on your team. 
right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I appreciate the love, Tyson. I'm really feeling it for you guys. All like we're trying I, to do that. So. I also had a belief that all Toms know all Toms, and this Tom <laughs> Wagner to Tom Brady. <laughs> it's just so like it's a real thing. It's yeah. real. Toms know right. Toms. Uh, <laughs> Kim and Caitlin, I know you both have to run right now, and I want to thank you so much for your time. We're really looking forward so to excited. what you all are going to bring to MLP in 2023 and are rooting for you. If you're ever in Arizona and want to play some pickleball, I'm your guy. If you're ever in Southern California and want to play beach volleyball because Casey is set on winning, uh, so he's going to challenge you to volleyball instead. Then he's well, your we guy. did that too. Yeah, we put <laughs> a beach ball. Oh, okay. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> you're you're perfect fit already, Casey. I think oh. it's a natural. I think it's a natural fit. <laughs> All my prayers answered. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, we would love and to I, meet you guys, and Michelle. I'm looking forward to meeting you yes, this weekend. We're excited, absolutely. and we, we love the MLP team. I think that's also something we looked at all three leagues, and I think we really came out on top. That like we believed in Steve Kuhn. We believe in the mission to grow to 40 million players by 2030. Equal, um, play. equal pay is yeah. really important to us. Equal play. Um, you know, I think MLP is just doing it right, and they have really good people. Like Kim knows Anne. Um, from back in the tennis days, and we just really liked the group that Steve's put together. So couldn't be more excited. So thank you for having us. Yes, thanks again for your time, and uh, we will see you on the courts and at the events. And if you can't make it to Columbus, it's always streamed. So you can watch it on CBS Sports Network, the finals on Sunday. And before that, it will be on MSG Network, which is all over the Northeast, yeah. one of the premier uh, – sports broadcasting networks for that area and uh yeah we got to make them we got to get make them get real close before they leave you know it's like they're on the, the school but the varsity school bus <laughs> on the way to the game like hey let's watch this movie together because they're sharing headphones but if you're just listening you don't know they're sharing like their headphones it's the most it's the cutest thing it's hilarious <laughs> and we want to send the invite to you guys too if you're ever on the on the east coast you know new yeah. jersey area yeah. Yeah. yeah i'm booking my ticket Always right the, now right i just happen to be out there weird gonna maybe i'm just gonna that. be there for two weeks i just weeks feel good? like we can, we can practice put a little Maybe practice a camp together yeah, yeah. Well, well, Kim gypsy, also so. hosts people in her house like ever she not only has three kids she's hosting two kids from belgium so she has to make food for five kids oh, including gosh, on top of herself two dogs <laughs> Which is crazy. And Michelle, by the way, I saw that you have a golden retriever named Maverick, and my golden retriever's name is Maverick. Oh, you know, no it. way. Oh we are and that Kim just Freddy got a puppy got golden. No, you did <laughs> yeah, not. So we're I'm the golden retriever seriously. Crew. Oh, my gosh. I'm booking my but ticket right now. we're not going right to use that as yeah. Yeah. our team name. Well, Tyson, <laughs> where are we going to go now? I guess we're I, out. We don't I have just booked a ticket. I'm getting a dog right now. And... I actually wasn't planning on getting a hotel while I was out there. I just assumed I'd be in someone's guest room. Sure. I know. Uh, so. Come like, on over. Be careful what you offer because I'm guessing with the three of our personalities, like we would be the people that would be like, hey, we're actually Ding here. Ding dong. <laughs> yeah. No shame like, here. You're welcome. You're I'm a welcome. gypsy, a bougie gypsy, but I will take you uh, up on that offer. <laughs> Do it. So. Be a maverick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, thanks again so much. Uh and uh we will see you soon. Thanks awesome. ladies. Thank you guys. Bye. We'll Appreciate ya. it. That was awesome. I loved that. Right? That was so yeah. fun. They're yeah. so fun. That was I super can't wait fun. to be friends uh, with them. <laughs> oh, and you're gonna get to it first because you're gonna be out in Columbus. Oh, uh. So much time. She's gonna put in so much I'm fun. I'm just gonna time. pave the way for all of us. Don't worry. I'll bring your cutouts, oh, cardboard yes. cutouts or something. <laughs> Yeah, like Zach and Kelly say by the bell. Zach like pulls the cardboard cut out of her holding volleyball. <laughs> I'm going to call you like every five minutes and just be like, hey, Michelle, just checking in. Are Kim and Caitlin like around you anywhere? Am I on speakerphone? Uh, am I on speakerphone right now? Uh, just wondering if any of the Toms are near. Anyone? Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll check back in in two minutes. Bye. <laughs> so great. Uh, Michelle. Yeah. You... Did you see the Duper news, how PPA is now also utilizing Duper to yes. uh, create their backdraws and uh, figuring out like how to seed everybody? I did. I did see that. 
Do you want me to keep incredible. going off and that th- point? It is incredible. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You can go or no. I can go. I think you're you better go. at this. You go. I, okay. I, well, I, I think you're better suited for it, but I believe that this is a step in the right direction of unification in the way that these leagues are maybe looking to go, question mark? Or I don't know. What do you think? I think so, too. I think so. Duper has been utilized by Major League Pickleball since the beginning to rank players, and then they utilize their rankings to draft them accordingly. It doesn't always go exactly, but some of those pros are so close that, you know, a couple points, percentage points here and there, uh, some of it is about chemistry, but it's been very accurate. Duper, I think the last handful of Major League Pickleball events has predicted the top four teams at these events every time. And so... Uh, PPA is now utilizing Duper's ranking system to seed their pro players w- when a tournament starts, and it's proved very effective as well. And I think uh, Michelle hit it on the head when she said a unifying system across the board, which can also be used by amateurs. Uh, and as I read through everything Duper is doing, it made me think that they are like the Strava of right. pickleball. Yeah. Like yeah. you can go play uh, matches with your friends, put them on Duper, and then you end up getting a ranking. You also kind of see like who you who you partner with best, and all of those types of things, which is really really intriguing information. And, and you really it, see what people play like when there's something on the line, like the ranking, which is a, a whole identity crisis for a lot of people. <laughs> they completely flip. I've seen more paddles thrown when we go duper game and people are so frustrated. It's, it's so funny, but I would, uh, I'd like to lay on top of that, that point you talked about earlier, like add on that we had world tour points, then we had our pro tour points and they didn't cross over. And so sometimes you didn't, you miss some pro tour events to go play on the world tour. And so your ranking was lower, but we were like the top U S team in the world. And we'd come back and these guys would be like, in such a terrible seating because they'd have to play us first round. And they're like, wait a minute, why are we playing you guys in the first round? We should be playing you in the semis, you know, and we should be out on the opposite ends of the bracket. So this solves all those problems. Uh, yeah. And I think that's something that I've always loved about Duper ever since I found out about yes. it. I signed up and I think it's rad. And then I also love it that training or practice matches that are logged in uh, are, are a little bit different than a tournament, right? Because there's a lot of different type of chemistry and there's a lot more on the line at a tournament versus a practice. So I love that they weight those differently as well. I think that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, uh, this is, I mean, this is what has to happen in the sport because it's, it's difficult to sign up for a tournament when you play casually without knowing really where you're at. But with duper now you can utilize it as a tool to see where you're at before you go to a tournament. And like at these duper events, it prevents people from playing, down levels or yeah. up yes. levels, can't sandbag. and yeah. you can't sandbag anymore. And <laughs> uh, that's uh, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so I love that. I love that there's a system. I love that they've figured it out. There's the algorithm that makes it very, very accurate. We've seen it time and time again in Major League Pickleball. We're seeing it now in the PPA events, and uh, we're also seeing it just at your local courts. I don't play duper games very often. I have to like <laughs> play a couple warm up games and see that I'm really on point. <laughs> then you I'm decide. Like, we should, yeah, we should do a duper game. Here, should guys. we? I'm, I'm slaying it today. And like, lunch? That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. So, it's yeah. so true, though. I really think it takes a lot of the arguments out of this because thinking back to like OG prior to MLP pickleball, it was so murky with. I think I'm yeah. a three five, maybe a four zero. Oh, that person's playing up. That person's playing down. Just like it makes it, it's such a relief to just take the BS out of it. Kind of. It's, yeah, it was all like folklore. Like, oh, I need to yeah. hire like somebody, like a hype man, to come and be like, oh, yes. here he's coming, just to make it sound like I was better than I was. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, here so he comes. True. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. he's so good. <laughs> oh. I mean, you got to keep that going now to get drafted. Yeah, yeah that's don't actually. Don't worry, we got you. I'll carry you yeah. in Columbus. I'll yes. hear your, your little cutout. Michelle, send <laughs> your Venmo uh, handle over, and I'll just keep feeding you. Thanks. Yeah, I need the money. Thank you. Thank you. I will. All my trips to Mexico, really, you know? There you <laughs> trying to make a count thin. 
<laughs> yeah, you got to get back to Mexico for that. I will make money off Casey Patterson. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, how is she going on vacation? Well, she keeps recruiting for Casey, and so <laughs> <laughs> he's just supporting he's just her Mexico trips. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> his duper rankings just keep going higher and higher. We don't know how, but he's doing it. <laughs> just from the talk. Yeah, just, just from talking talk. strictly yeah. from well they did say uh, that off court was just as important as on and that I've is got true. that dialed <laughs> yeah oh, i've got that dialed yeah you're halfway just there yeah program it into their subconscious yeah just start whispering <laughs> casey patterson casey patterson as i walk past the toms <laughs> michelle yet but you will <laughs> Just incept so that they eventually yeah. they can't stop thinking the name Casey Patterson. It's, it's like deja vu when they meet you. They're like, we, we met before? I'm like, yeah. I've heard your name. I feel you, like I know you. you. Yeah. Familiar. yeah. That's right. It's a very delicate, delicate process. Yes. It's intricate. We're working, we're working from the outside. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> Michelle, you're going to Columbus this weekend. We're going to change topics here now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> You're getting in. What are you doing there? Are you going to be uh, commentating the whole weekend? I unfortunately can't Friday, Saturday, but I will be flying in Sunday to do the CBS broadcast <clears throat> at 7 30 p.m. Oh, yeah. Okay. Live on CBS evening, Sports Network. Live right? on CBS Sports Sweet. Network and MSG Networks next week, as you mentioned. It'll be re airing, yes. right? Next week. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, for those who are un- don't know about MSG Network. MSG stands for Madison Square Garden, and it is the largest media market in the U.S., that northeastern area, and they cover all the New York City pro sports teams for New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, and Pennsylvania, and they want in on the pickleball game. So they will be broadcasting on their network full coverage of Major League Pickleball events all weekend. And then exclusively on CBS Sports Network, we can listen to our own Michelle McMahon. Yes. 7.30 p.m. on CBS Sports Network. Super, super exciting time for pickleball. And uh, it just keeps getting better and better. And look, I don't want to go back to when we were talking about LeBron James like a week or two ago and me saying that it's only going to keep getting big and bigger. And now we have... A Kim Kleisters Tom Brady partnership. Yeah. Like, Hello. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I so mean, sick. It doesn't get any. It's. I was half wondering when it was like, okay, LeBron James is getting announced first. How could they even match that <laughs> with the, a, a next announcement? Oh. And then you have the the power duo there, which I love. What you brought up too, Tyson, earlier the combination of the, um, you know the the female male athlete, the different layers of, of expertise that they have. Caitlin having the, her division one soccer experience, then with the financial background, Tom Brady, obviously we know Tom Kim with her background. It's just such a cool combination to me. Like it, I didn't even think of that as like a synchronicity with, I don't know, the teams literally mirroring their team in the areas of expertise. I just think it's yeah. So cool and a home run. And it's just, I can't even wait to see where it goes from here. <laughs> that they're only either. the second ownership group announced. So who the heck are the other ones? <laughs> yeah, We've got right. two more. We've got two I more know. coming up. Oh my gosh. It's I know. Oh. So, okay. okay. Well, before we close out, I want to encourage all of our listeners to follow Major League Pickleball on all social networks on Instagram. They're on TikTok now, they are on Twitter. They, on YouTube, you can watch the videos of the podcast there as well as their highlights and all the other things they're putting out. They're putting out a lot of cool content. And you can also visit them at MajorLeaguePickleball.net for any information, join their newsletter, things like that. And if you can't make it to Columbus, tune into the streams this weekend. Uh, Thanks, Casey and Michelle. We will see you both next week. Yes. Bye, guys. Thanks, guys.